Hello students, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Dr. Aditya Saxena from the Department of Physics, Central University of Haryana. Today, we are going to discuss about a module, Properties of Operators, Commutators and Identities under the paper Quantum Mechanics 1. So students, let us first see what all we are going to be learning in this module. Firstly, we'll know the important identities of commutator algebra. And it's important to know these identities because by using these identities, we can actually greatly solve the formalism of quantum mechanics. From here, we'll move on to learning the definitions of functions of an operator and we will also study a few examples. We'll then get to know the differentiation of an operator and learn some properties relating to the differentiation of the operator. Then, we will learn the definition of trace of an operator and study some examples. And it's also important to know the trace of an operator because if the trace is actually the sum of all the diagonal elements and in case if we diagonalize a matrix then simply by finding out the trace of the operator we can actually find out the sum of all the elements of that matrix. Then we will learn the meaning of invariance of trace of the operator. And finally, we will study the example of a potential as an operator including a useful identity. So, in this module, some important properties of operators and their commutators and some well known identities are recapitulated. In particular, the definition of a function of operator differentiation and trace of the operator with some examples are discussed. In this, we will also see how the differentiation of an operator actually tells us that if we are looking at two operators like the coordinate or the position operator and the momentum operator, then we can see when we move from the coordinate representation to the momentum representation, then the corresponding operators simply are the Fourier transform of the operator in the other representation. So, in case of position coordinates, the corresponding Fourier transform leads us to the momentum formalism or the momentum coordinate system and vice versa. Then, we will discuss the concept of the invariance of trace and the purpose here is not only to acquaint you with the elementary properties of the operators but also to familiarize you with some of the important identities which you will find useful in your subsequent studies in quantum mechanics. Commutator algebra and identities it is useful differentiating to write the operators a few simple now let us see of the what will happen when we differentiate the product of will two be used operators operator in the quantum and mechanical G formalism with respect to and a variable which are t easily verified is d so by dt the first of such identity operator f in the commutator algebra G is and this is equal to of operator d a operator f with by dt operator b times plus operator g is equal plus to Operator F times of operator A D by the operator B of operator G. Plus, in order to prove this relation, of operator A let us write with operator or rather C. let us consider and we can see two vectors that this U is I and U J proved. and then write the following up the equation. commutator relation Bra vector U I operator C proceed operators G to solve that commutator vector U J is equal to summation over the commutator K. relation Bra vector right U I. Operator the next F identity is get vector U K relation bra vector U K of operator, operator G times get operator vector B U J with so operator C we can write is equal U to I 
Commutator so relation we can write of operator draw vector a UI with operator C d by d times of operator B product of operator F operator, operator A G times commutator get relation J of operator is equal B to with summation over C K and bracket if open. If you look at the bra vector right hand side UI, of this equation, d by d t of operator F, will see that get vector U K the result bra vector U K left hand side operator G equation get vector U G identity plus bra vector U I Operator of F, get operator vector UK, A, bra vector UK, relation D by DT of, of operator three G, terms, get vector UK, the first term being bracket closed, commutator relation, relation we have written of operator after A, substituting with for the commutator the relation of, FNG of D by DT B of and FNG. FNG. C operator plus and now we get the final result as of operator bra vector C ui with the commutator by relation dt of, of product of operator, of operator f and with operator, operator b get vector uj plus is equal to commutator bra relation vector ui of operator d by b dt with operator f commutator relation of operator, of operator c get vector with uj operator a plus whole with bra vector ui is equal to zero operator f so times d by dt open up each of operator the three g terms on the left hand side uj within brackets as the last and solve for the commutator relation for all we will see I and J, that all the, the terms relation is cancel established. Out. So, in For this example, manner, we see that the commutator relation e to the power cyclical. operator A times now, T, if e to the power operator, operator A B times and T, operator B are two operators as follows, which both commute with their commutator, that is, commutator of operator A and operator B, then we can try and verify two identities A, commutator of operator A with operator b to the power n is equal to n times operator b to the power n minus 1 times commutator of operator a with operator b and second commutator of operator a to the power n with operator b is equal to n times commutator is equal to n times operator a to the power n minus 1 times commutator of operator a and operator b now, if we try and verify the first of these two relations, for n is equal to 2, we can write equation A as commutator of operator A with operator B whole square is equal to operator A times operator B square minus operator B square times operator A. And this is equal to commutator of operator A with operator B times operator B plus operator B, operator A, operator B, minus operator B times commutator of operator B with operator A, minus operator B, operator A, operator B. And this is equal to, after solving, commutator of operator A with operator B times operator B, plus commutator of operator B, plus operator B times commutator of operator A, with operator B and this is equal to twice of operator B times commutator of operator A and operator B commutator algebra and identities it is useful differentiating the operator a few simple now identities let us see of the commutator algebra which will be used extensively in the quantum mechanical formalism and which are easily verified so the first such identity in the commutator algebra is commutator of operator A with operator B plus C is equal to commutator of operator A with operator B plus commutator of operator A with operator C. And we can see that this is proved if we open up the commutator relation on the left hand side and simply proceed to solve that commutator relation we will reach the commutator relation on the right hand side the next identity is commutator relation of operator a times operator b with operator c is equal to commutator relation of operator a with operator c times operator b plus operator a times commutator relation of operator b with operator c and if we look at the right hand side of this equation and we open up we will see that we will finally reach the result that is written on the left hand side of the equation
third identity commutator relation of operator a commutator relation of three terms the first term being commutator relation of operator a with the commutator relation of operator b and operator c plus commutator relation of operator c with the commutator relation of operator a with operator b plus commutator relation of operator b with commutator relation of operator c with operator a whole within brackets is equal to 0 so if we open up each of the three terms on the left hand side within brackets and solve for the commutator relation we will see that all the terms cancel out so in this manner we see that the commutator relation is cyclical now if operator a and operator b are two operators which both commute with their commutator that is commutator of operator a and operator b then we can try and verify two identities a commutator of operator a with operator b to the power n is equal to n times operator b to the power n minus 1 times commutator of operator a with operator b and second commutator of operator a to the power n with operator b is equal to n times commutator is equal to n times operator a to the power n minus 1 times commutator of operator a and operator b now if we try and verify the first of these two relations for n is equal to 2 we can write equation a as commutator of operator a with operator b whole square is equal to operator a times operator b square minus operator b square times operator a and this is equal to commutator of operator a with operator b times operator b plus operator b operator a operator b minus operator b times commutator of operator b with operator a minus operator b operator a operator b and this is equal to after solving commutator of operator a with operator b times operator b plus commutator of operator b plus operator b times commutator of operator a with operator b and this is equal to twice of operator b times commutator of operator a and operator b functions of operators if a function f of a variable z is defined by a series then by definition the function of the operator a is the operator f as a function of operator a and this is defined by the series f as a function of a is equal to summation n going from 0 to infinity cn operator a to the power n where cn are the coefficients the most important function defined in such a manner by the series is the exponential function where the exponential function of operator a is defined as exponential function of operator a is equal to summation over n going from 0 to infinity operator a to the power n upon n factorial and this is equal to operator 1 plus operator a plus operator a square by 2 factorial plus so on plus operator a to the power n upon n factorial it is also easy to check if operator a is hermitian or not so if we have an operator in the form of a series of operator a then further we can write f as a function of operator b operator a operator b inverse is equal to operator b times f as a function of operator a times operator b inverse and this identity can easily be checked by expanding the function in series in particular for a unitary operator u we have a useful relation f as a function of operator u operator a operator u dagger 
is equal to operator u times f as a function of operator a, operator u dagger. And for understanding this identity or relation, we can take an example. So if we have an eigenvector given by ket vector phi a of the operator a such that we can write operator a acting on ket vector phi a is equal to a times ket vector phi a where a is the eigenvalue then applying the operator n times that is operator a to the power n acting on ket vector phi a is equal to a to the power n times ket vector phi a thus f as a function of operator a acting on ket vector phi a is equal to summation over n going from 0 to infinity c n times a to the power n ket vector phi a and this is equal to f a acting on ket vector phi a functions of operators so from our previous relation we can see that it follows that if we have an eigenvector ket vector phi a of the operator a with eigenvalues a then this is also the eigenvector of the function of f of operator a with the eigenvalue f a for this we can consider an example we let us take a matrix o z is equal to 1 0 0 minus 1 which is a 2 cross 2 matrix then exponential of the matrix oz which is equal to e to the power oz is given as a matrix which is again a 2 by 2 matrix of the form e 0 0 e to the power minus 1 now the functions containing two or more operators in such cases we have to keep in mind the order in which they are appearing that means it is important for us to remember the order in which the functions are appearing or acting. And again to understand this, let us take an example. The operator e to the power operator a, e to the power operator b, comma, e to the power operator b, e to the power operator a, and e to the power operator a plus operator b are in general not equal. It is only when the operators a and b commute that is commutator of operator a with operator b is equal to 0 is when the three cases discussed above are equal that is e to the power operator a e to the power operator b is equal to e to the power operator b e to the power operator a is equal to e to the power operator a plus operator b differentiating the operators now let us see what will happen when we differentiate the product of two operators operator f and operator g with respect to a variable t that is d by dt of operator f times operator g and this is equal to d operator f by dt times operator g plus operator f times d by dt of operator g in order to prove this relation let us write or rather let us consider two vectors ui and uj and then write the following equation bra vector ui operators f operators g ket vector uj is equal to summation over k bra vector ui operator f ket vector uk bra vector uk operator g ket vector uj so we can write ui so we can write bra vector ui d by dt of product of operator f operator g ket vector uj is equal to summation over k bracket open bra vector ui d by dt of operator f ket vector uk bra vector uk operator g ket vector uj plus bra vector ui operator f ket vector uk bra vector uk d by dt of operator g ket vector uj bracket closed this relation we have written after substituting for the product of f and g d by dt of f and g operator and now we get the final result as 
bra vector ui d by dt of product of operator f and operator g ket vector uj is equal to bra vector ui d by dt operator f times operator g ket vector uj plus bra vector ui operator f times d by dt operator g ket vector uj as the last expression is valid for all i and j the relation is established for example differentiating a function e to the power operator a times t e to the power operator b times t we will proceed as follows useful identities now for example if we want to differentiate a function then let us consider the following case differentiating a function e to the power operator a times t e to the power operator b times t we will proceed as follows we write this as d by dt within brackets e to the power operator a times t e to the power operator b times t is equal to operator a e to the power operator a times t e to the power operator b times t plus e to the power operator a times t operator b e to the power operator b times t and this is equal to e to the power operator a times t operator a e to the power operator b times t plus e to the power operator a times t operator b e to the power operator b times t and this is equal to e to the power operator a times t operator a e to the power operator b times t plus e to the power operator a times t e to the power operator b times t operator b but not as operators a plus b within brackets e to the power operator a times t e to the power operator b times t that means that the order of the operators is important now let us see how we can prove the relation e to the power operator a times operator b times e to the power minus operator a where this is given by the relation operator b plus commutator of operator a and operator b plus 1 by 2 factorial commutator of operator a with commutator of operator a and operator b plus 1 by 3 factorial commutator of operator a with commutator of operator a with commutator of operator a and operator b plus so on useful identities now in order to prove the relation mentioned above let us consider the expression f as a function of lambda which is given by e to the power lambda times operator a operator b e to the power minus lambda times operator a now using the taylor series expansion for the function f as defined above we write f lambda or f of lambda is equal to f of lambda equal to 0 plus lambda times df by d lambda at lambda equal to 0 plus lambda square upon 2 factorial d2 by d lambda 2 of f at lambda equal to 0 plus so on now differentiating this above expansion with respect to f of lambda that is and calculating the function at lambda equal to 0 we get f of lambda equal to 1 is equal to e to the power operator a times operator b times e to the power minus operator a and this is equal to operator b plus commutator of operator a and operator b plus 1 by 2 factorial commutator of operator a with the commutator of operator a and operator b plus so on and this proves the identity that we have defined above now similarly we can also prove the corollary for the above relation that is if we have two operators a and b which commute with each other and also with their commutator that is operator a and b commute with their commutator commutator of operator a and operator b then e to the power operator a e to the power operator b is equal to e to the power operator a plus operator b plus 1 by 2 times commutator of operator a with operator b and the students are advised to work this out and see whether this identity can be proved 
trace of an operator. Trace of an operator is the sum of its diagonal matrix elements and is denoted by TR operator A. Trace of an operator. For a discrete orthonormal basis given by ket vector ui in the vector space, by definition, the trace is given as trace of operator A is equal to summation over i ui ket bra vector operator A ui ket vector. Whereas in case of a continuous orthonormal basis, ket vector u alpha, it is defined as trace of operator A is equal to integration over d alpha, bra vector u alpha operator A, ket vector u alpha. Now let us look at the invariance of trace. The sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix representing an operator is independent of its basis chosen. To show this property, let us consider the case of a change from discrete orthonormal basis to an other discrete orthonormal basis. That means we are going to be changing from one discrete orthonormal basis to another discrete orthonormal basis. Mathematically, this can be written as summation over i bra vector ui operator a ket vector ui is equal to summation over i bra vector ui bracket open summation over k ket vector wk bra vector wk bracket closed operator a ket vector ui. So, again discussing the invariance of trace, we can rewrite the equation given earlier and the right hand side of the equation can then be written as summation over i k bra vector u i ket vector w k bra vector w k operator a ket vector u i which is equal to summation over i and k bra vector w k operator a ket vector u i bra vector u i ket vector w k note that it is always possible to change the numbers in the product so using this closure relation or the closure property we get summation over i bra vector u i operator a ket vector u i is equal to summation over k bra vector w k operator a ket vector w k and using this relation the following important properties regarding the trace of the product of two or more operators are worth recording the first property is trace of operator a and operator b is equal to trace of operator b and operator a that means that the trace of the product of the operators remains unchanged when there is an interchange of the order in which the operators are operating and the second property is trace of the operators a operator b and operator c that is the trace of the product of the operators a b and c is equal to trace of the product of the operators b c and a and this is equal to trace of the product of the operators c a and b that means the trace of the product of three operators remains invariant in cyclical change or cyclical transformation or interchange now let us prove the first property that we had written above so let us write down the trace of the product of operator a and operator b and this is given by summation over i bra vector u i operator a operator b bra ket vector u i and this is equal to summation over i j bra vector u i 
ऑपरेटर ए केट वेक्टर यू जे ब्रा वेक्टर यू जे ऑपरेटर बी केट वेक्टर यू आई एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू समेशन ओवर आई जे ब्रा वेक्टर यू जे ऑपरेटर बी केट वेक्टर यू आई ब्रा वेक्टर यू आई ऑपरेटर ए केट वेक्टर यू जे एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू समेशन ओवर जे ब्रा वेक्टर यू जे ऑपरेटर बी ऑपरेटर ए एंड केट वेक्टर यू जे एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू द ट्रेस ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द ऑपरेटर्स बी एंड ए एंड इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम्पल नाउ लेट एस कंसिडर अ पार्टिकल ऑफ मास एम इन अ वन डायमेंशनल प्रॉब्लम डिस्क्राइब बाय अ हेमल्टोनियन ऑपरेटर एच गिवेन बाय ऑपरेटर एच इज इक्वल टू ऑपरेटर पी स्क्वेड बाय टू एम प्लस ऑपरेटर वी where the first term is on the right hand side is the kinetic energy term or the kinetic energy operator and the second term on the right hand side is the potential energy operator and where the eigen vectors of the hamiltonian operator h are denoted by ket vector phi k so that hamiltonian operator h acting on ket vector phi k is equal to ek times ket vector phi k where ek is the total energy eigen value corresponding to the above mentioned hamiltonian operator now we can derive the identity which is defined as follows summation over s within brackets es minus ek modulus whole square of x k s is equal to h cross square by 2m where h cross is equal to h by 2 pi and h is the planck's constant and x k s denotes the matrix elements bra vector s operator x ket vector k so in order to prove this identity let us start from the commutator half commutator of x and h with operator x is equal to operator x operator h operator x minus half operator h operator x square Minus half operator x square operator h. Now let us calculate the matrix elements of the terms on the right hand side. So we can write half bra vector k commutator of commutator of x and h with operator x ket vector k is equal to bra vector k operator x operator h operator x ket vector k. Minus half ket bra vector k operator h operator x square ket vector k minus half bra vector k operator x whole square operator h ket vector k. An important identity. Now from the above equation, let us consider the first term on the right hand side. Bra vector k operator x operator h operator x. Ket vector k is equal to summation over s and t bra vector k operator x ket vector s bra vector s operator h ket vector t bra vector t operator x ket vector k and this is equal to summation over s and t bra vector k operator x ket vector s e s delta s t bra vector t operator x ket vector k and this is equal to summation over s bra vector k operator s ket vector s e s bra vector s operator x ket vector k and this is equal to summation over s e s modulus whole square of x k s proceeding in a similar manner the last two terms can also be simplified giving half bra vector k commutator of operator x operator h with operator x ket vector k is equal to summation over s within brackets es minus ek modulus whole square of x k s now if we substitute for the hamiltonian operator h with operator h not plus operator v on the left hand side of the matrix element where we define operator h not is equal to operator p square by 2m then 
we get bra vector k within brackets commutator of commutator of operator x and operator h plus operator v with operator x ket vector k a useful identity so looking from the above equation if we have the basis representation of the basis vectors ket vector x in which we calculate the expectation value the commutator of operator x operator v is equal to 0 thus we finally have commutator of operator x and operator h not with operator x where operator h not is equal to operator p square by 2m now commutator of operator x and operator p square by 2m is equal to 1 by 2m i h cross 2 times operator px and commutator of operator px with operator x is equal to minus i h cross so substituting these results above we get on the left hand side half bra vector k commutator of operator x operator h naught with operator x ket vector k is equal to half h cross square by m this identity is called the thomas rishi kuhn sum rule which will be found useful in the future studies that we undertake in the formalism of quantum mechanics so students now let us round up what all we have learned in this module so firstly we learned the important identities of commutator algebra which we will be using very frequently and very exhaustively in our formalism of quantum mechanics then we learned the definition of function of an operator and we also studied a few examples of the function of an operator and how these work then we learned the differentiation of an operator and also we learned some of the properties of the differentiation of an operator then we learned the definition of trace of an operator and we also studied some of the examples of the trace of an operator and we also learned how to find out the trace of an operator where the trace of an operator is just the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix then we learned the meaning of invariance of trace of an operator and finally we studied the example of a potential as an operator including the useful identities that are associated with the potential as an operator thank you